Okay, my name is Lavita Ivory, like ivory soap. And my name is Sydney Lauren Ivory. Uh, my story starts uh, about two years ago. Um, my husband passed in 2016, and it was a sudden thing. It was like overnight he went to the doctor, and he didn't come back home. He was supposed to be there at 12 o'clock, and then at 6 o'clock, and he didn't come back. I started checking to see, you know, where he was. But he wasn't coming back. At that point, I started finding out a lot of things that I didn't know. And after I added up all of my bills, that was $120,000 in debt. And so it was time to, um, to do a new thing. And so uh, my daughter, she had been waiting on, on a job, and they still weren't coming through. They, you know, they said, we'll come back to you next week, come back to you next week, come back to you next week. And I wasn't working at the time. I was doing women's ministry. And that wasn't going to be what we could live off of. And the money that I had saved up, I was going to have to keep us afloat for a while. So my daughter decided that she was going to go into prayer and see what was God saying. Because, okay, God, my mama running out of money. My daddy did. What you going to do, you know? And so she, she went into prayer. And about 40 minutes later, she said, Mom, I got two emails from Traverse City. And um, they want to give me an interview. And I said, when? And she said, in the morning. And I said, okay, we're packing our, our things and, and, and we've got we to gotta get out of here, you know. And she said, but we can go to the storage and I can get to Traverse City. And <laughs> I said, okay. So I said, okay, not meaning okay, because at that point my, my engine light had, had came on. And so I knew God wasn't saying we're going to catch Traverse City because the engine light is on. And then when we got to the storage, she couldn't get in the storage, so God was saying no. And she said, no, God is, is saying yes, I'm going to call and, and I'm, I'm going to delay my, my interview, but I'm going to be there. So we, we did that, and with the engine light on, I came to Traverse City. To my surprise and my amazement, she, she got the job. And um, now it wasn't what they said it was going to be. It wasn't 40 hours a, a week. All the things they promised, it wasn't going to be any of those things. She was going to get paid every two weeks, and it was going to be part-time hours. So um, that wasn't going to work. And I was expecting um, to find a place, like, easily. You know what I mean? Like, you pay, like, your rent every, you know, month or whatever. So I was, like, calculating, like, based on what she told me. Like, I was, like, expecting, like, my paycheck to be a certain way. So with that, like, in the back of my, my mind, I'm like, oh, I'm set. I'll be fine. And then when I just kept coming up short because I had to pay for so many things that I, I, I had downstate, I'm just like, okay, wait, I am so short. So I was like, oh, I'll just get hotels and stuff. Mm. Yeah, that, that didn't last very long. Nope. <laughs> I, I, was, I was sure I was going to be able to like, like bank on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, did, that did not happen. We were losing a lot of money really quick. Yeah, like real quick. And, and, and she didn't want to, she didn't want to give up because she had made up her mind. And so she said, let's stay in the car. I, I, didn't, I didn't know if she could handle being in a car because you don't know what the, the temperatures are going to be. And because I, I, um, I have a sun allergy, she said maybe that's not going to be the, the wisest thing because all day while I'm at work, you'll have to sit in the sun. And so we, we stayed sometime in, 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 in hotels or, or, or motels or and then sometimes we um, we just stayed in the car and the, the night before the car just died remember it rained yeah it rained like all day it rained and I was so tired and I was so hot and and by that time my skin was really starting to, to peel and my hands were you know just pretty you know pretty burnt from the the, the sun and but I said, Lord, let it rain. I said, rain, rain, rain. Because it just seemed like something was coming. Like it's, it was something coming in the rain. Mm -hmm. And then the car died. I said, okay, this is not funny. <laughs> the next day is when I, when I met Matt. Yeah, I, I, met, I met Matt like, like two weeks before. So I walk into Staples and I see Matt 
And so I kind of like just walk over there and I'm like, hey, I need to speak to the manager. And then he gave me this look of like, I am not getting the manager for you. I don't know what your problem is and it ain't happening today. <laughs> I was like, well, it's not that serious. You know, I just want to charge my phone. He was like, oh, okay, sure. I was like, that was easy. So um, he let me charge my phone. And so we just ended up like randomly talking about random stuff. And then at one point he mentioned uh, about East Bay and like how, how much he loved to loved his church and his pastor and everything. We ended up exchanging contact information, everything. Yeah. He was like, well, if you need anything, you know, holler at me. Uh, my name is uh, Matt Peplinski, and I've been coming to East Bay for about a year. I know when, when I got the call, um, I had no idea how to respond. In that moment, um, I just knew the first step that God wanted me to take, and I was just very reluctant to take it. And so it wasn't just an automatic, oh, this is the right thing to do, I'm gonna do it. It was just a very much an internal struggle of just like, oh, I'm starting my first year of teaching, having my own classroom, and it starts first day of classes on Monday, and this is on the weekend before, and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm stressing out, I'm freaking out, and I'm like, God, this is not a great time. Right. Like, <laughs> seriously, you chose right now. Um, I mean, I just had to kneel down and pray, and just, um, just through prayer, God was just like, just take that first step. Like, you gotta trust me, you know? Like, once you take that first step, then I can start to move. After I really felt called to make that first step, I know I um, got in contact with Sydney. I was like, where are you? And she's like, ah, oh, we're around the Walgreens. And so I go, and I know Sydney and I walk around a little bit. We talk about what's going on. And then I was just like, just come stay at my place. The problem was, too, we, we were having difficulty being, being accepted here. And so people weren't apt to want to rent and and he understood he oh, yeah. understood that, yeah. you know he 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 understood everybody wasn't going to be as open minded as he was. We stayed with you was it was it seven days eight days something like that. Yeah, a little over a week. And yeah. that that gave us enough time to make the connections that that we needed to, to make. I just come end of the week, just completely exhausted from that first week with my class, no, no, no. and just on my drive home, I remember um, I remember praying like the same same type of prayers that I had prayed throughout the week, but I was just like, no, like I gotta be intentional. Mm -hmm. And I remember at that moment, I was just like, I'm not just gonna pray for vague things. Like we've been working at this all week. We've been trying to find a place. Lord, I know that you will provide. Yes. And I know that you have all of this under control. Mm -hmm. um, just like, just move us mm -hmm. and yeah. we will do whatever and just like I came home and I just I've almost never felt more sure about something mm -hmm. I remember you were looking at me like I was crazy I know mm -hmm. we've been making calls and going to places all week but no this is happening right now and we go to the place and we sit down with the people and there was like it wasn't a sure thing once we left but I remember you and me were just like no yeah you guys have the place <laughs> I, re I remember thinking, I said, this is either divinely orchestrated or this boy is crazy because he didn't know us. And Matt is not the kind of person that you um, seldom meet, but that you rarely meet. It was like God was speaking through him in some kind of way that I, I just don't even understand. You didn't have to ask him. You didn't have to, to beg him. He would just offer. I don't even know where it was coming from. I don't know at all, but he was just right there each step of the way to like um, cushion blows that we had already had. It, he was like a cushion. Life sometimes just comes in and I mean, you get punched in ways that you're not expecting to get pushed, but it seems like for every hit we were getting, Matt was like a cushion. He was like, he was allowing you to bounce off of him. He didn't have to do that. And, and he wasn't afraid. Matt was not afraid. And I think only the, 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 the leading of the Lord can cause you not to be afraid. When everything inside of you is the saying to give up, to let go, to push back, and you hold on and you keep on and you, I think it was a part of travailing with him too. Because not having done that, it had to be kind of scary. 
And then he had to be asking himself, okay, why, why am I doing this? In other words, what's in it for me? And, 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 and many times I think that's a, a, a worldly thought, not ne necessarily a Christian thought, but we're human. So naturally you're thinking, okay, how is this going to benefit me down the, 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 you know, down the road? He never asked for anything. And he, he, did, he never seemed to, um, to be anticipating anything. We just truly just thank God for him. He's, he's been, not only has the Lord been a present help in the time of trouble, Matt has been present even when we didn't know. We didn't know that we would need a present help. 